Here in this video, we're going to take a short look at spring potential energy or more accurately, elastic potential energy. So it's a short one because there'll be another chapter later, chapter 9, Deformation of Solids, which is all about springs and not only springs, but like normal objects that can be stretched and squashed. So here we go, uh, elastic potential energy. So first story is, what is elastic potential energy? It's basically energy stored in an object due to deformation. So if you have like a clicky pen, something like this, you could take it out and then you look at the spring inside. Every time you press the pen, you're actually compressing a spring. It means when you release it, it clicks because that stored energy is released. So that stored energy is what we call elastic potential energy. And here's an example I'm going to look at about work done by an external force, like the force of my hand, to compress a spring. So let's see, at the bottom here, this line is, say, a wall. Let me draw some lines to illustrate. Okay, this is a wall. If you have a string of a natural length, let's say something like this. Okay, so this length is what I call L naught. Why are they called not? I don't even know. L0 if you want to say that. Okay, L0. So this is its natural length, uncompressed. Then comes along a force that squashes that spring. So maybe the spring becomes this short in the end. Oh, it's black color. Eh. I said the poor spring becomes squashed because of an external force that did some work on it. So this is some force that changes. I don't know. I'll just put an F there to label it. Now, what is the length of the string? It's not L0 anymore, you know. It's, it's changed to something else. So how can we label that? Well, one thing we can say is the, the, the length of this whole string now, like this, is just L. I don't know what, what, what value it is, but I'll just call it L, not L0 anymore. So, what is the compressed, uh, compressed distance? That compressed distance, because of this force, is what we call x. Why x? Well, some of you may think of it as extension of a spring, but we're not extending, we're compressing a spring. Okay, compressing. So here the x is that distance which has changed. Okay, the string originally this long, squashed already. How much is it squashed by? And side note, by the way, uh, to get the original length that is, oh, I should, no, no, no. to get the x length, all you need to do is take the original length minus the length now. And that will give you that, this uh, red color extension here. Okay, so that's the whole story. You apply a force, compress a spring a certain uh, distance. You may have remember, you, well, you would have taken this before in IG somewhere. Uh, there's this thing called Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law. This hook guy basically did a lot of work on uh, extension and compression of objects, particularly spring. There's a law named after him. So Hooke's Law is this. Fkx. What k is, or oh, f is the force needed to compress or extend a string. k here is what we call the spring constant. This SP constant. X is extension of a spring, or more accurately, you should say extension or compression of a spring. So it's saying if you want to compress a string more, you need to apply more force. Okay. So how do we calculate then the work done to compress a spring? Well, you may say, oh, what if we just oh W equals to F S? Then F is just the red color F long F times X equals to work done done. Is it? Wait, 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 wait. Um, here's the thing to know. This F is changing depending on what X is. So this F R is not just a constant 10 Newton everywhere. No, 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 no. Depending on how much you compress, you might need more force to do that. So really, this F actually changes with X. This bracket X means the force depends on the compression X. So mm, I don't think we can do this quite well because F is changing depending on X. So hmm, we need a better way to define the work done. 
I remember uh, earlier we talked about the original form of work done. The original form looks something like this. Integral of f, uh, f s ds. Normally we say, oh, f is constant. So you can just say, oh, take the f out, integrate ds, and you get f times s. Okay, that's if work is, uh, if the force is constant. But if it's not, then you're kind of stuck at that level, and you have to solve it based on this. So what this whole squiggly line integral thing means is basically find the area under the FS curve. Uh, SF graph, okay. Oh, so if we can't just plug it into W equals FS, we need to think of the graph. How does the graph look like for this particular uh, compressed spring? And from there, we can find the work done. Let's try it out. Okay, so example, we have this, uh, this graph on the right side. The vertical side, I'll call it force. Uh, the horizontal component, I'll call it displacement. So in this case, it will be the, the, the compression of the spring. So, well, let me not call it displacement then to make it clearer a bit. What if, let's see, I could call it X. Let's call it L, length of the spring, to account for all the lengths. So let's look back at scenario one here, the OG original length of the spring. So you start off at some length, no force acting on it, zero force. Okay, so right here, F is zero, no force acting on it. So let me pick a point. Let's say I start off here. At zero force, you have original length L zero. Okay, now as you apply a force, mm, Oh, the length, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the, the spring gets shorter. As it gets shorter, you need to apply more force to compress it. So, you will reach a certain point until you get to scenario two, where you would have applied a la some large force and your spring is at length L. So, this is some, let me label this red color force at that point. Which means your line is going to look something like this. Oops, I overshoot. Ah! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, imagine that's a straight line. So I start off on the right side, okay? No original length, no force. And then as I apply a force, the spring gets shorter and shorter. Now here, I have a graph. Where the F is not quite constant, that's okay. We have to think of area under the graph. So we have the area under the graph, which then is the work done. Oh, ho, ho. So the work done by the force to compress the spring is really the area inside here. Okay, so how would you find the area of that thing? It looks like a very nice triangle. Remember how to find area of triangle? Okay, so let me wrap off this stuff so we can expand a little bit. Okay, so we can't just uh, integrate a constant f because f is changing depending on how far you go. So here the work done is area under your FL graph, FL graph, which is then a, a, a triangle area. So okay, so we have what's how do you find an <laughs> how do you find a, the area of a triangle? Let's call this the height and call this the base. Half times base times height. Okay, so you have half times your base, I'll just write it times height. That's the area of a triangle. Base, the, 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 that distance is then L0, the original length minus L, times the height. So the height here is just F. Yeah, okay. So the value, value of the height is F. Okay, so we got almost there. Uh, how do we change it or make this equation simplify a little bit? Tip, tip, look at the, the original equations on the left side. There's one here, and there's one down here, Hooke's Law. Let's substitute all this into our work equation to make it hopefully simplify a little bit. Okay, so we have half uh, L0 minus L. That is really x extension of the uh, spring. So here, this distance is the extension or the compression of the spring. Why do I say extension when it's obviously compressed? So a compression of the spring or a change in length. Oh, change in length is a better word. Mm. Then the F 
depends on the extension. So the more compressed the spring, the more force you need to put it in, put in to hold the spring there. So the force is depending on the spring constant times the change in length of the spring. So we put them all together, you get half kx squared. And this is how you can calculate the work done to compress the spring. Or you could say the elastic potential energy stored in the spring. Okay, this amount, half kx squared, is something you should, you will want to remember, so you don't have to derive the thing all over again. But also make sure you know where this equation comes from. It comes from the area of a, area under a graph because the force is not a constant. So we can't just say force times distance. No, no, no. We have to find the area under the graph. Okay, so this one is the whole idea of how to calculate elastic potential energy for springs, objects, all kinds of stuff that basically can be squashed. Like even this arrow B here, if I squash it, it's going to deform and it's going to recoil like a spring. Okay, so all kinds of objects can be deformed and we have a whole chapter, chapter 9, which will look at deformation of objects, materials and things like that. So there, there are some questions that I want you to try out. They are down in the description below. There are very few paper, paper one uh, multiple choice questions for that I arranged for this unit just because there's a whole chapter of it. But I want you to try out some questions in paper two. They are listed in the description below. So go and try them out. There's three of them. Uh, but basically the idea is now that you have springs that can store energy. Let's say I have a container with a spring inside, kind of like a pen, you know. And this spring is, com is well, it's original length. And what if I put, I compress it with an object, such as a little snooker ball. Okay, so the snooker ball maybe at first is here. Then I press the snooker ball in. So it's L0, and then, oh, now it's a different L here. So that means this spring has now stored some amount of energy. Uh -oh. It's ready to launch that, that snooker ball anytime. So imagine if you, okay, let's say I hold the spring here. Imagine once you release the spring, what's going to happen to that snooker ball? Firstly, your spring is going to want to return to its original position. And it's going to do something to this snooker ball, pushing it out. So if we say no energy is lost, no friction energy, then all the stored spring potential energy is going to become kinetic energy here. Okay, so all your work done to compress the spring has become kinetic energy. Or if you want to say work done by the spring on the ball. So your ball is now whoo, it's flying out. Okay, so in these questions, they will ask you to calculate kinetic energy and potential energy and relate both of them. And that's where you have to think of, okay, so I did work on the spring to compress it. Now the spring energy is transferred to the ball. No, nothing lost to friction, right? You must check the question properly. So then half mv squared. All the energy is transferred to this uh, snooker ball. Sometimes, if they want to make it more complicated, they would give you something like this. You have the original spring vertical now. Then, you have the same snooker ball sitting up here. Nothing's compressed. And now you pull back that snooker ball. And now it's sitting down there. And you hold the spring. Same thing. You're kind of storing uh, spring potential energy. You're doing work on the spring. And then once you release the spring, it's going to return to the original. But now this snooker ball is going to be pushed up. So it's going to have three energies at play now okay we have of course we talk about spring potential we have kinetic energy or i should say work done but what is one more energy that's at play here potential energy don't forget if i say here the original position of the ball if i want to look at the center if i say this potential energy is zero once i release the ball and it's launching up it's going to have some potential energy as well, mgh. Okay, so now there's more things at play. Potential energy, kinetic, and the spring potential energy. Oh, I should say gravitational potential, spring potential. Okay, 
so these are some examples that I want you to try out and think through very carefully how to think of energy being converted from one form to the other. There is one challenge question, which is about two objects in the spring, the third uh, MCQ. That one also must try, must do. That's part of the homework question, uh, which you will do and submit soon.